I want to do a really short video for people that either own boats or are thinking about buying boats, particularly inboards, and they are nervous about the winterization process. Maintenance can be intimidating because it's expensive. I hear friends or people that I work with talk about what they're paying to have um, minor service work done or winterizing done. And I thought if we could help with some of that to save people some money or to maybe make this a little less intimidating, then that would be a great thing to do. So I am going to show you a couple of ways to winterize. And in Wisconsin, uh, we get some pretty cold winters. Not too long ago, we had uh, 33 below for a period of days. So I tend to be meticulous about winterizing because a little bit of water trapped somewhere uh, that freezes and pushes out and breaks cast iron or you know part of your out drive or something can be really expensive. And it doesn't have to be expensive to winterize if you just take a few precautions. So things that you're looking for in the boat as far as the motor goes, you've got um, plugs that look kind of like this that might be in the engine block. You might be looking for, oh, drop one, something more like this, like a brass plug that's threaded in somewhere with a drain. And I'll show you what's in this boat and why I decided to do this is this is almost a 50 year old motor and it's had some cobbling done on it. So when they tell you to look for X, Y, or Z, it might not be there anymore. So you want to be a little systematic about how you're doing this because you've got the engine block. So you got the, the engine itself the exhaust manifolds and these risers um, are for sure the minimum of what you're looking for. So risers, you're generally looking somewhere in the back here and you should be able to see that right back here. So there's your, um, if I can get in there a little closer drain on the riser this might be a plug these were at one time plugs and got switched over for obvious reasons because it's kind of tight back in here on your exhaust manifolds you're going to be looking for a low spot so down here you've got brass plug and on this side low spot you've got an actual bolt because um, the plug was frozen in there at one point and um, it was an absolute mess so I ended up tapping it and putting a larger uh, plug in which happened to be a bolt that I had laying around and if you ever replace the exhaust manifolds well then obviously you're going back to a brass plug but this should do suffice for until that day comes. On the engine block, on both sides, you are going to have some kind of uh, outlet, whether it's this style, like what's on a radiator, or you know, the, one of the brass ones that I had in my hand standing outside the boat. An important thing to consider is sediment and rust and different things do get caught up in these and you should get yourself a piece of wire or something and be able to you know kind of ramrod it through and make sure you get a good flow of water out. Uh, because it's been down in the 20s overnight I've already drained the block otherwise I'd open these up and, and kind of show you how you would be doing that. You're basically just going to turn those open, let them run. And if you're not getting any liquid out, then get a box wrench on it and take it off and replace it because it's probably filled up with rust and sediment. I 
it's looking like kind of an early winter and there's a lot of water and pine needles and leaves building up in here so I want to get this boat winterized and put away and if you don't have a pump or a convenient way to push antifreeze through your block and out drive then I would suggest popping a couple of your hose clamps off and getting a funnel and just pouring some RV and marine antifreeze into your motor and it'll run out the back. Um, you don't need to have every last drop of water out. You just need to have some color so that the antifreeze prevents the water from freezing solid. It may slush up, but it won't, it shouldn't freeze solid and like crack your block or anything. And a lot of times, um, a couple of gallons is going to be required for a bigger inboard like this V8. Generally, you're going to need a couple gallons to have that peace of mind and make sure you did that properly. I'm going to try and do this really quick. I've got, took a, a screwdriver with the socket end and just undid the hose clamps here. Of course, I wait, waited until a really cold day to try and do this because the hoses are a lot harder to get off when it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Two. Two. There we go. All right. It's probably shaking all around in here. Just gonna get get some antifreeze poured in there. I could already hear something running. Might be pushing water out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one-handed here, but um, if you have filled things up with antifreeze to where you got to start putting hoses back on, uh, because it was running out of my hoses, so I popped these back on. It's starting to run out the water neck here. Uh, you know you filled the engine up with antifreeze, basically. The only other real test you could do here is pop some of your plugs back out, or in this case, open. I end up giving my phone a bath and see well you can't tell um, I don't have my cap that's pink which is what you're looking for okay so let's ignore the drain plug that's running but out of the out drive here you see what's coming is got a fairly good pink hue to it that's running out here that's what you're looking for. Any water that you're pushing back out, you want to make sure that you got some color. And this took about two gallons. <laughs> 